good morning, brothers and sisters. We offer this month for our deliverance from the pandemic of COVID-19. The frontliners who unselfishly offer their services in these difficult times. For those afflicted with the virus and other diseases and those who have died. For proper guidance and enlightenment of our civil and church leaders. For those who send their private intentions. For the benefactors and friends of the Basilica and for our personal intentions. Let us now pray the Oratio Imperato. Please all me. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins, and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand. Dispel the first sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people to to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts since the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion, grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died, give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady of Piat, health of the sea, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsot, pray for us. Santo Domingo de Guzman, pray for us. Please all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In today's gospel, Christ calls blessed those who believe without seeing. Jesus had shown himself to our, the apostles. He is alive and he reigns in glory. The response of Thomas is for every believer, we, be, we confess Jesus as our Lord and our God, though we have not seen him with our own eyes. Seeing him with the eyes of faith, we give testimony to this faith by our living hope and active service to our brothers and sisters. Today also, is Divine Mercy Sunday. This celebration is a perennial call to every Christian to face with confidence 
in divine benevolence the difficulties and trials that humankind will experience in the years to come. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions. We pray for all those who ask for our prayers and for the intentions of this Holy Mass. Now, my dear sisters and brothers, let us also acknowledge our sins and so celebrate and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Yes, 
Santo, Santo da Quirana, Deus amado. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp, may grasp rightly understand in what form they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Through the apostles, the reason Jesus works signs and wonders, which strengthen the community of believers. The believers, in turn, earn the esteem of the people. The first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Exiled for the faith, John describes his vision of the risen Christ, master of life and death. Christ is with us, 
especially in times of trials and difficulties. The second reading, a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, we share with you the distress, the kingdom and endurance we have in Jesus. Found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony for Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and another world. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the eve of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they, saw, when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he said, to, he said this, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you, ret you retain are retained. Thomas, called the Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks, of his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. 
Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your right hand and put it in my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples that were not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that the, through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Meron po tayong kasabihan na to see is to believe. Di ba? Kailangan nakikita po natin bago tayo maniwala. No? Eh, yung nga pong joke nila na lately, no? Na yung sa mga meron po daw na uh, magbibigay ng pera pang vote buying, sabi naman daw po nung nung nagtag nagbagboboto sabi niya ay sir to see is to believe kailangan meron mo ng down payment ganyan na daw po ang kalakaran ngayon sa sa vote buying so kailangan may ebidensya kailangan may konkreto na nakikita ganyan po ang ang sinasabi natin parati di ba when we say to see is to believe Today's gospel po ay ganyan din po ang pananaw ni Thomas sa ating pong gospel. Sabi rin po ni Thomas, hindi ako maniniwala kung hindi ko makikita at hindi ko mahahawakan ang mga sugat ni Jesus. Yan po yung kanyang demand. Diba? Because as we all know, after the death of Jesus, He resurrected at nagpakita po sa mga disciples Unfortunately, Thomas was not with them, no? So, hindi niya nakita yung unang appearance o hindi niya experience yung unang appearance po ni Jesus. Kaya ano po nangyari nung kwento nila? Anong sabi niya? To see is to believe. Kung hindi ko mahihahawakan ang mga sugat niya at kung hindi ko makikita at uh, hindi ko mararamdaman yung sugat sa kanyang tagiliran, hindi ako maniniwala. Yan po yung explanation po ni Thomas. But after that, Jesus appeared to them again. At nung nakita nga po niya na si Jesus na po ay totoo, real, no? nahahawakan, nakakausap, ano na po ang bigla niyang sinabi? My Lord and my God. Yan po ang proclamation po ni, ni Thomas para sa ating Panginoon, no? He proclaimed His belief. Pero yung question po ni Jesus is very beautiful. Naniniwala ka lang ba dahil nakita mo na buhay ako? Or naniniwala ka dahil talagang nani, may perong kampana ng palataya? So today, that is the same question po para sa ating lahat ng ating pong gospel, No? Tayo po ba ay nagsisimba? Tayo po ba ay nagdarasal? Tayo po ba ay nananampalataya? O tayo po ba ay katoliko o kristyano? Dahil tayo ay naniniwala kay Kristo. Yan po yung tanong din po sa atin, kagaya po yung tanong kay Thomas. Do we believe in Jesus? Kahit hindi po natin nakikita, kahit hindi po natin nakikita physically ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo as the demand of Thomas dito sa ating pong gospel. Today, Jesus also tells us that instead of seeing, then believing, sabi po sa atin ng ating Panginoon, balik rin po natin. No? 
instead of seeing, then believing. Balik tarin po, paano po ito? Believing, then seeing. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Kasi kahit po nandyan sa, ma- sa harapan na po natin, kung wala kang pananampalataya, hindi ka talaga maniniwala. No? Kasi you want to demand more evidence. No? Ganyan po tayo kung minsan. But Jesus challenges us. Balik ta rin mo. Maniwala ka muna, then makikita mo. Yan po ang totoong pananampalataya. Kapag tayo po ay naniniwala kay Jesus, makikita po natin no, na ang araw-araw na buhay natin ay grasya ng Panginoon. Kapag tayo po ay naniniwala kay Jesus, makikita po natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos. Kapag tayo po ay may pananampalataya kay Jesus, makikita po natin kung gaano mapagmahal ang Diyos. No? Dahil nauuna po ang ating pananampalataya. Ang pananampalataya po natin ang nagbibigay ng liwanag. Ang pananampalataya natin ang nagbibigay sa atin ng mata para makita ang kabutihan ng Diyos. Remember po, kabaligtaran ito kay Thomas. Kay Thomas po ang sabi niya, makikita ko muna dapat bago ako maniwala. Yan po ang kanyang demand. May physical muna na makikita siya bago siya maniwala. Pero sabi sa atin ng ating, ng ating Panginoon, kahit nandyan na ang grasya, kung wala kang paniniwala, hindi mo makikita yan. No? kailangan meron ka munang pananampalataya. No? So, paano natin sasabihin na ang Diyos ay namuling na buhay? It is through our faith. Sabi nga po ni Jesus sa ating pong gospel ngayong araw nito, no? that is why ang demand sa atin ngayon po bilang mga Kristiyano is that we need to strengthen our faith ang ating pong pananampalataya. Hindi po sapat na tayo proclaim natin na tayo po ay katoliko, na tayo po ay kristyano, pero mahina ang ating pananampalataya. Kailangan po pinapalakas natin ang ating pananampalataya. Paano po? By reading the scriptures. No? Binabasa ang Biblia. No? By going to Uh, mas no to attend the sacraments no learn more about God yan po yung sinasabi sa atin ng ating pong simbahan no let us try also to give time for the Lord let us also pray no let us give time na para makipag-usap sa Panginoon feel the presence of God yan po yung demand sa atin ng ating pong simbahan para tayo po ay magkaroon ng matatag na pananampalataya. At pag tayo po ay mayroong matatag na pananampalataya o faith na tinatawag po natin, then we can see clearly kung gaano kabait ang Diyos, kung gaano po kapag, kapag mapagmahal ang Diyos, at kung paano po tayo iniligtas ng Diyos sa ating pong mga kasalanan. So again, Today, Thomas tells us to see is to believe. But Jesus tells us, believe, then you can see clearly. Believe, then you can see the grace of God. Believe, then you can feel the presence of God. Amen. Please all stand. Let us now profess our faith. All together, I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Lord, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Father of endless mercy and boundless compassion, look upon us with love as we leave to you our supplications. In every petition, let us say together, Merciful Father, hear us. Merciful Father, hear us. Reborn in baptismal waters, may the Church carry on the healing mission of Christ in the midst of a troubled world. We pray. Merciful Father, hear us. By the power of your word of life, Break through the fears of the leaders of our nations so that they may be empowered instruments of justice. We pray. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father, hear us. Through your freeing love, may those who are sick, depressed, anxious, and all who are in any form of bondage be led to the peace and healing presence of the risen Lord. We pray. Merciful Father, hear us. Enable those who are in despair because of their weaknesses and sinfulness to draw near to the font of mercy, Jesus Christ, your Son. We pray. Merciful Father, hear us. <clears throat> Trusting in the faith of your gospel, may our beloved dead who hope in your mercy Find home and contentment in the eternal life you have promised. We pray. Merciful Father, hear us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Merciful Father, hear us. Gracious Father, hear us as we call on your mercy. Sustain us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love as we savor the Easter festivities with great joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all be seated. Please all stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that when you would be confessing the confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right <clears throat> and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that you do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread in giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be guarded into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ricardo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us now pray the ark of his spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you're in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Sa 
Please all stand. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let our response in our prayer be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be protected at all times. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who work or seek for public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray together, Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations. Politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Our Lady of Piat. Pray for us. Saint Dominic de Guzman. Pray for us. Please be seated.
We'll now have the second basket collection for the expansion of the facade of the Basilica of Our Lady of Fiat. Those who wish to give more may give your donations at the parish office. Thank you. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. May God, who with the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom. Make you heirs to the eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray the prayer before he crucifix. Look down upon me, good and gentle Jesus, while before your face I humbly kneel, and with burning soul pray and beseech you to fix deep in my heart lively sentiments of faith, hope, and charity, through contrition for my sins, and a firm purpose of amendment, while I contemplate with great love and tender pity your five most precious ones, pondering over them within me, and calling to mind the words that David, your prophet, said of you, my Jesus. They have pierced my hands and feet. They have numbered all my bones. Prayer to Our Lady of Piat, O Virgin Mary, Our Lady of the Visitation of Piat, I have recourse to you today. I do offer this day in praise and thanksgiving for past benefits, and in the hope of receiving new blessings, which you know I need in life. They know, dearest Mother, to shower upon us all the blessings which we need most for body and soul, particularly. And a special grace to thine God's love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lady of God, pray for us. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.